<clears throat> Anyways, first thing we want to do is go over to this little camera, change this to cycles, and then change this from CPU to GPU compute. And basically that's going to prioritize your GPU and GPU compute just makes things run a lot faster. And then we're going to go over to this like Polaroid image thing. We are going to change this. It's not essential, but I recorded in 4K, so mine's going to be 3840 by 2160 and I recorded in 30 frames 29.97 and yeah that's pretty much it for that and what you want to do is hit zero and actually first you can delete this by hitting X and you can hit zero and if you try to move around um if you don't know how to move around it's the middle mouse button to like move around in blender if you don't know how to do that i'd go watch like a beginner like beginner beginner tutorial on that like basic stuff okay so back in the camera hit n and then go over to view and then hit camera to view camera to view okay and then after you've done that select your camera up here select this camera icon and then go over to background image and then add image movie clip open and then go to wherever you saved your video okay and then after you found your video you want to double click and now as you can see uh we have our video clip in the background and we can move around and what i'm gonna do first before i do anything is i'm gonna drag this up and then i'm gonna find where i want the video to start so i'm doing some like st stupid little dance like like i was really feeling myself like i thought i was killing it but like okay so we'll start right here if you see right here four or five so do start 405 and then i want it to end like let's say around for the sake of the tutorial i'm only gonna render like 100 frames so we'll do 505 now what we can do is first we need to double check to see in the redders re what in the render settings the frame range make sure it's the same as what it says right here all right and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit n again turn off the camera to view and then we're gonna select this cube and we're gonna use this cube as reference. And we're gonna hit one on the keyboard, hit G, C, and control until your the bottom of the cube aligns with the red line. And then we're gonna go back into the camera. We're gonna shift A and then make a plane. And this is gonna be the ground, also known as the shadow catcher in this case. And then we're just gonna scale this up. Uh, I'm gonna go in wireframe for this. And then we're gonna S, by and then so what some people do is they would adjust the objects in the viewport to match it with the camera but you should do the opposite you need to adjust the camera to the objects that way it's a lot easier to adjust things in the viewport if that makes sense that probably doesn't make sense but i'm just gonna roll with it and that looks pretty good that seems pretty aligned um yeah that looks great okay and before you move make sure you turn this off or else you're gonna move the camera again and then because that's what i just did all right and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the plane go over to the camera icon go under film make this transparent and then we're gonna go into whatever this is and then visibility and then shadow catcher it's really important and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a Sun so I'm gonna hide actually no I'm not gonna hide that yet I'm gonna go into the render view shift a go over to light add a Sun, sun, sun. we're gonna put this up and then basically we're gonna try to match the shadow like this so the Sun is like over here so what we're gonna do is rotate this until we get a similar shadow and that seems good for right now and basically that's already looking like pretty cool you know um if you hit f12 this will be the render view it'll render and it's not going to render the background because we're going to be adding the background in after effects also i forgot very the most important thing in the whole editing industry make sure you hit control s make sure you save I, this happened to me so much where i just forgot to save and then i i lose everything so i'm gonna name this uh blender compositing tutorial 
And so now we're just gonna get rid of this cube. Uh, we don't need that, just use that as reference. And I'm gonna be using this site called Mixamo. It's super great, it's free, and it comes with a bunch of like already made animations, super realistic animations, cause it's from like a mocap suit or whatever. Uh, not the sponsor, but it's still really good. So I'm gonna go and do like this, okay. Ugh. Okay, we're, we're gonna do this one, super groovy. And we're gonna match the frame rate, which is 30. Everything's the same, just hit download. And then we're gonna go back into Blender and then we're gonna import uh, FBX. Go over to downloads, wherever you downloaded it, double click. And there we have this dancing guy, which doesn't seem to be dancing. Oh wait, I know why it's not dancing because the keyframes are over here. So if we add these keyframes back then there we go now he's dancing he's grooving and then what we're gonna do is as you can see it like cuts right here so what we're gonna do is go over to non-linear animation and then we're gonna click this thing right here and then hit n and then go over to a strip and then scroll down to action clip and then we'll go right here to repeat and then just go to after the video's over. And so that way he's dancing the whole time and it's a seamless loop. All right, now what we're gonna do is kind of match him with the rest of the environment. So we're just gonna scale him that. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Put him over here, make him the same height as me. And then as you can tell, uh, we're gonna hide the rig too because we don't really need to see it. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an HDRI to kind of make him brighter and have that natural lighting to it. And what the HDRI does, it's it it's pretty much uses the lighting in the HDRI that you took. There's a bunch of tutorials on like in-depth tutorials on HDRIs. I'm not too educated on it. I just know the use of it. So we're going to go to some HDRI converter. I usually use this one. I'll put a link in the description and then just drop this in here, convert. And then we're going to go over here to the world settings. And then we're going to click this yellow dot next to the color, hit environment texture. And as you can tell, he's like pink now because that's the default color with the blender hdmi hdmi what not hdri and then we're gonna open go over to where we made the hdri and then boom that like pretty much just solved all our issues and as you can see it did make our shadow uh lighter so what we're we actually should have made the hdri first i usually do that i don't know why i whatever and then we're just gonna adjust the strength on this again until we get the same as the real shadow all right, and that's pretty much that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move him just a little bit lower because it doesn't seem like he's fully on the ground. And then what I'm gonna do next is optional, but um, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the shading chat chab. We're gonna go into the shading tab, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of customize this a little. And as you can see, we can change the color, and then we can turn the roughness down, and then yeah, he's a shiny mannequin. And then maybe with this, uh, I don't know. What what, what do y'all want to do with this? We can make it more metallic. Turn the roughness down, um, and then I might turn this up a little bit more. And another great thing with the HDRI is that it uses the HDRI reflections on like pretty much anything inside the 3D scene. So that, that's why HDRIs are just like so important. But yeah, you can really just like play around with this. And yeah, that, that works. And then as you can see, uh, you can see like the, this is what I mean about the HDRI. Like, look, like it's realistic reflections. I know I, this wasn't like the most perfect HDRI um but it just adds that realism so much so yeah that's pretty much it so now we just need to go do the render settings if you want this is optional i don't really do this but you can turn on motion blur and then turn it uh up or down um usually if i want to add motion blur i just do it in after effects that way like if i die if i decide i don't want motion blur i can just easily turn it off and then go over here to the output properties and then we're gonna select this and then 
I would recommend having a designated folder for Blender animations. And we'll hit accept and then make sure this is on RGBA because th what that's going to do is it's pretty much going to make the background transparent because we, we don't want the actual video clip in the render. So we'll keep it at that. Make sure this is at 29, like make sure this is the exact frame rate. And yeah, we're pretty much good to render. So we're just gonna go over to render and render animation and then I'll be back when it's finished rendering. Okay, so now that it's done rendering, we're gonna go into After Effects, drag your video into the composition, and then what we're gonna do is find out where we cut on in Blender. So for this example, the timing doesn't really matter. It was about like right here. Now we're just gonna trim this. What we're gonna do, we're gonna import the animation now. So this is important. Listen, are you listening? Listen, this is important. Okay. As I was saying, uh, you're going to want to double click and then go over to where you saved the animation. And then what you're wanting to do is you're going to click the first frame, the first frame of the animation and make sure this says PNG sequence. And then you're going to want to click import and then it's going to import it as a PNG sequence. What? And then we're just going to drag this onto here. Okay. And then as you can tell, this is not where it's supposed to be. And that's because I rendered, well, I recorded in 4k and rendered it in HD. So it's smaller. So all you need to do is hit, go to transform and then fit to comp and then it should be fine. And then boom, you, you have your animation it looks pretty okay got your 3d object in real life footage but uh we gotta fix this shadow because this is not the same as this so what i'm gonna do is this is probably not the best way to do it but this is just how i'm gonna do it and we're gonna pre-comp this move all attributes and then hit okay okay so after you've pre-composed it what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna duplicate it and then call this one shadow and then I'm going to rotoscope uh, this area out. So I'm pretty much just going to rotoscope the 3D, the him. We're just going to call him him. And then after he's rotoscoped, you're going to go over here and hit invert. And then when it's just the shadow, you can go over here and hit freeze. Oh, wait, I actually just realized we don't need this layer. All we need to do is just duplicate this and then just click this invert button again. And boom, now we have our shadow and the character isolated. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a tint effect to it, grab the eyedropper off the black color, and then just eyedrop the shadow I already have. And as you can tell, it's a little bit darker. So what you can do is just make this darker, like that. Or what you can do is just add a curves effect and then just adjust it till it looks pretty much like mine all right yeah and that's pretty much it it's not exactly how it looks like i think what i should have done in blender is make the edges a little bit sharper um what you can do to fix that is basically just select your light and then turn this angle down so i should have put it to like zero that way it has a harsher edge like mine but yeah just like small details and like that and now you have a realistic buddy to dance with so yeah that's pretty much it let's go if you guys want me to do another blender tutorial just comment down below what i should do if i should do more like advanced stuff like simulations and like uh, well whatever you want and yeah i'll see you in the next video probably in like a few months i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs>